the next uh, Verge talk we're going to hear about is uh, the power of people smart buildings. Please bring one of the people smart people that I know, uh, the founder of uh, HP Energy and an advisor to Enlighted, uh, John Picard. John? Thank you. Thanks, Joel. Real honor. Thank you all. So I'm here to give you a 10-minute story. A story, actually two stories. The first one is the story of this perfect storm that's arriving. It's a health crisis. It's a financial crisis. And it's a climate crisis all happening at once. And for sure, as you heard all day today, if we don't get a convergence of human condition and technology and change our behavior, uh, we're in for a wild ride. The solutions that are coming out of the valley, the connectivity, the design, and innovation is unprecedented. It's extraordinary to me to see the kind of people and technologies that are being delivered every day. But one of the technologies and one of the companies that I'm working with is called Enlighted. And they built a device that's called Blackbird. And this is the first time that Blackbird's been shown. Blackbird is a sensor, a sensor that will become part of the sensor network that you've heard about today. Importantly, deployed in a building like this, or in the story I'm about to tell, deployed in a bank building on Wall Street a few months ago. And so this company in Lighted was, was built to just trim lights, to just do the dimming. And they put a controller on every light. And the lights would soften almost like weather. And we would see a 60% energy savings from that technology. When we asked this bank client if we could do a pilot on the 20th floor, we weren't prepared for what was about to happen. We deployed this technology. It was in the building for a week. And the head of mission critical and security for the bank calls up and says, dude, you got to remove that system, the wireless networks conflicting with our Federal Reserve trading network. And we said, shit, no way. <laughs> and then the party began. Well, that Friday, the week we were supposed to take it out, we missed. But at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, a banker went in to the 20th floor, took two bags of popcorn, put them in the microwave oven, and like a good banker, cycled the popcorn button twice. And the popcorn burned. It smoldered. What does he do? It's Friday. It's late. He's embarrassed. Puts him in a recycling bin, puts the lid on, and goes home. The next morning at 9.30, a young Indian engineer shows up to work at Enlighted in Sunnyvale, showing off his key fob and his new desk to his parents. His dad's an engineer. His mom's just blown away that her son's in the Silicon Valley, rocking it. And his, his son says, hey, dad, take a look at the big screen. So over on a big screen, there's case study, the Wall Street Bank, this heat map that shows everything going on in the building. Occupancy, temperature sensing. And his father looks and goes, son, I see a predictive fire alarm on the screen. This little pulsing light, this tiny little glow on the 20th floor, in the kitchenette, in the trash can. And his son says, that's fake. It's just a video. We run that just to show off the technology. His dad says, I'm an engineer. There's a timestamp. That's a fire. Call your boss. He calls the boss. The boss calls the bank. The security guys go upstairs. They walk in. The kitchen's on fire. The nearest fire sensing system's 30 feet away. The analytic and predictive timing of just a few seconds here could be incredible. But here's where the story gets really interesting. So the guy who threw us out on Monday calls up and says, I don't say this very often, but I was wrong. I want you back. And I want your whole team back. And you need to be here like Wednesday, because I'm bringing in the people that underwrite the building. And I'm bringing in the people that own the building. And if we get this right by the weekend, we'll deploy your lights throughout the building. And we will lower the risk in the building. And the New York City Fire Department showed up too. And a battalion chief sat there and started asking questions. And by the end of the day, the questions were this and the answers were this. Could I use your lighting control network 
to have that technical transparency to see into the building to determine the occupancy on any floor. And I said, yeah, you can drive down in the building with a telemetry like this. You can see across the building. You can see the fire. You can see where it's spreading, the temperature. You can't see who these people are, but you can see blobs of people, and you can see the exits. And he goes, perfect, because I'm not going to put a man in a building anymore until I can have the insight on what to do. Imagine, isn't that amazing? A company that was engineered to build a product that installs in 15 minutes or less. It's an integrated wireless solution that was engineered just to shave and trim energy. But the data coming off of it, this powerful little sensor that Blackbird is, can detect so many things. And it's what we do with that data. It's the data visualization. It's the transparency that we can now look into buildings. And as the fire battalion chief kept talking, the risk on this building kept going down. And so when I see this kind of technical transparency, and when I see the kind of people that I've seen this morning talking about jet engines and the internet of things and the thousands of engines or the millions or billions of cars, imagine this connectivity in billions and billions of square feet with millions and billions of people in that space with the convergence of that technology. See, we just can't manage buildings anymore. We have to make decisions to them. And we can't manage what we can't see. And what I love about the internet and what I love about this industrial size problem that we created in the first industrial revolution is that the second one is arriving. The second industrial revolution are the coders, the hackers, the developers, the designers, you all. You all who get it. Now, I spent 25 years in the green building movement. Some of you know me. I've had some good moments. Ray Anderson, Interface, the greening of the White House for Clinton. I've been around. But I was completely frustrated for the last 25 years that I could not move the needle. And I was searching for these kinds of solutions, this kind of power, the democratization of all of the information of who we are and where we are. And this isn't just who we are. There are so many possibilities coming out of this place called the Valley, just 40 minutes south of here. It's outrageous. So as buildings as, trans as transformational sensor, sensor networks, you can't hide. So as we convert buildings to sensor networks, a bad building is there. It's going to show up. If you listen to Bono's talk on poverty, in the last two minutes of his TED talk in 2011, he says it was transparency to the problem of poverty that reduced it by 50%. And this is what we're talking about here with Blackbird and many, many, many other sensor technologies. Electrochromic glass, pneumatic thermostats, all these clamp-on integrated wireless-based technologies working together. And that's the next thing that has just happened. So that story at the bank was just six months ago. And in the last three months, Blackbird is talking to electrochromic glass. Blackbird is talking to Nest thermostats. Blackbird is talking to operable skylights. Blackbird is talking to LED light drivers. Blackbird is talking to the entire building system. Blackbird is the new BIM EMS system, and it's cloud-based. Everything in the world is going to be IP addressable and cloud-based in the next 10 years. And the technical transparency, this power tool that we have at our disposal, it's early days now, it's early stage, but it's coming. So I got to hand it to Rich Green and the team at Enlighted for, for, for making this, for, for bringing this up. I, uh, I feel like I'm at Apple and I'm announcing the new iPhone. I feel like th this is, you know, I, coming here, I, I was thinking, how could I ever convey it's bigger than the iPhone? How could I ever convey that this isn't about one-to-one -one communication? This is about us connecting in our space in a way that we can absolutely make the decisions we need. So the value, the risk, the insight, the mapping, the energy transparency is where it's at. So if we can't see those storms I talked about, maybe, maybe, maybe we can see the solution storm. 
How good could it be? What's possible today? And if I had to say one thing about all the speakers today, and I'll bet you if I stay the rest of the week, I would summarize by saying the only thing we're going to miscalculate is how this will accelerate, how fast digital efficiency will prevail. And nothing, nothing will outweigh digital efficiency. So when I moved up here four years ago to discover the people of the valley who work in mathematical expression, who work in the science of science, that's what was missing with sustainability. And so Joel, I haven't had a chance to thank you, but this group of people, this conference, it's the most meaningful thing, it's the most measurable thing, and I think it's the most important thing that we could focus on going forward. So let's turn the coders and the designers loose, and let's get this place balanced. My dad ran the Apollo program. He was a senior engineer at GE. I used to go see the Saturn B-1 booster rockets. You saw that image of the Earth. I saw the same thing. But I went right past me. But watching my dad put this whole thing together in less than nine years, I realized nothing's impossible. And in the last four or five years, I feel like I'm in the same space again. Yeah, we're not going to the moon, but we are definitely, definitely heading for an Earth shot. And I think it's going to happen here. And we need, as Ray would say, we need to climb Mount Sustainability. And more importantly, we need to summit soon. So my name is John Picard. I'm at the Enlighted booth. I'm here. Thank you for having me. If you want to hear some more stories, I'll be here the rest of the day. Thank you.